Alright, the seven pin tube sockets have arrived. So I'm uh, working on changing this one and I'm, I'm taking a little bit more time and I'm uh, going to use the soldering station instead of that big clunky thing. Uh, this one came out okay. It's never going to be a problem, but... The only thing I don't like about these sockets is they don't have the the center support, but yeah, it's a trade-off. Look at that! That one drops right in there without without any kind of uh, malipunating of the pins. So this is part two of the repair of this. Uh, chassis TV or part three video part three there are two previous versions to this and this chassis is the same as that goes into this set as well as the pedestal barber pole whatever you want to call it so previously I removed two capacitors one from right here which was a 0.047 and the one that was standing up right here which was a 0.068 so what I will do now is I will verify those values in the SAMs uh, and replace them and then we'll go through and replace the rest of them one at a time verifying each one in the SAMs as well as in in the uh, on the capacitor tester so here are our capacitors right here Looks like what we removed here was C41 and C24. C41 is a 0 .068 at 200 and C24 is a 0 .047 at 400. Right there is C41, comes off the uh, grid of the horizontal uh, oscillator, and what did I say this other one was, C41 and C24, was it? Okay, here's C24, it actually feeds the video signal onto the cathode of the picture tube. So this one probably wouldn't be that big of a deal being out of spec, but this one would be. Okay, in fact, you know what I'm going to do, since the owner of this wants to keep it to an absolute minimum, I'm going to just change the ones that I see necessary. And um, it depends on where they are in the schematic and what they do. Now this one here... One five zero zero would be one thousand five hundred picofarads or uh, point oh oh one five, and I found it on the thing, the schematic, and I mean on the parts list, and here it is right here. It's a point oh oh one five at a thousand volts, and this is this one right here is very important. It's very critical. If this capacitor, anything in this line, this chain going, this feedback chain is out of whack, then the deflection on the top of the picture will be whacked out. So I have to find a replacement for that, and that's going to be kind of interesting. 0.0015 at a kilovolt. I don't know if I have that. And I did not have that. I have 0.001, and I have 0.0018 and 0.0012 in disk and uh, 0.001 but no, not any 0 0.0015 at one kilovolt so uh, for right now I'm gonna move on to this one and see where this one is in the circuit okay now this is where the verification makes all the difference because I initially looked at this and read it as yellow purple yellow which would be 0.47 and then I took a look at it on the schematic 
and it's a uh, point one. And then I took another look at it and cleaned it off a little bit and I see brown, black, yellow. You barely see that, so that's a point one, not a point four seven. Looks like point one is a common value. And this sucker checks pretty good. Uh, let's see, let's go to leakage. It's a 400 volt cap. Okay, we'll go to 50 volts. It's 150 volts. Yeah, let's change that. Okay, this one here, 0 .033, that's C20. That's right here, that feeds the, uh, between the video detector and the video output. Zero volts there, point, negative point three volts there. Uh, that's not really, uh, We'll check it, but there's no voltage across it. It's probably not to worry about. And this thing is leaky at 50 volts. So screw it. It's garbage. Let's see what it measures, if it measures anything. Oh, yeah. Measures a little something about 0.45. Okay, this one here, this is a 0.022. This one here is connects right here to the local distance switch and thing is going to be run most likely in distance so we're not even going to screw with that that's just a bypass capacitor anyway uh, there's no voltage across it really who cares if it's leaking it's, it's not going to make any difference I'm not going to screw with it um, this one here is a real hot one though. I gotta find the right part for that. That is a hyper critical. Uh, this one here too, I gotta check. This is the one across the uh, across the oscillator coil. That one is um, probably that one there, 0 .039. So yeah, exactly, 3900, orange, white, red. So this one is my, my main, and of course that's kind of a weird one. I'm going to have to dig around here and see if I could find something. This is the .0039. Check this thing out. It's so bad, that's all the eye does. You see that? Right there, see it shift? Shifting at about 0 .008, right there, you see it. Let's go to leakage, 50 volts. Yeah, it's garbage. Check out this um, badass glass military capacitor. How about I put that in there? Look at that, look at that eye opening. Yep, right on. Look at that. Do leakage, we'll go up to uh, 250 volts. Nothing. Okay, back to this point oh oh one five. Now looking at the schematic. It's in the feedback circuit. They do not have this listed as a precision cap or a 10% or a 20%. Uh, they don't even have it in the parts list as a... Because some of these will say, like, uh, let's see, some of them I changed. Like this one here, 10%. So that's pretty critical. Um, you know, the rest of these, they don't have that percentile 
rating on them so I'm um, thinking it doesn't really matter um, in fact these have a red so green green and I don't know what the red I don't know if the red is like two for twenty percent or what but this one is you know brown green red so that's one five oh oh and then this could be black brown indicating a thousand for voltage but I don't know I don't know how to read these so um, I don't have a .0015 and my local guy doesn't have a .0015 so I'm thinking about using that and that this is 182.0018 and usually I don't like to use disk capacitors if it's not spec'd out for them because they drift a lot and this is a very, this right here is a very hypercritical part of the circuit. But the only kind of saving thing to using that would be, this is the bottom of the TV. So the heat, you know, rises and pulls air in the bottom. So this is not really going to be, you know, if it was up here, then there would be a large change as the set warmed up but since it's down here I, I I don't I don't think it would be that big of a change the other thing I'm thinking about doing is putting shields over these tubes metal shields and the reason for that would be to keep the infrared radiated heat from the filaments in this from heating up and baking these couplets if they're good it might be a wise thing because the infrared radiation out of these tubes is incredibly high. If you look at these things in night vision, uh, they look like, you know, huge bright light bulbs because it's, it, there's a lot of light radiated. It's just in the form of infrared heat. It's real low in the band. So let me pull this out of here. We'll test it and see where it's at. Yeah, this is another one where you just get absolute very minimal eye opening that's basically it and if we put a hundred volts I'll put 450 on it since it's a thousand volt capacitor it's shorted and I know this thing had had very poor vertical deflection especially at the top of the screen so this thing's got to go um, I just need the right capacitor that's the big problem can put that I can put that disc cap in there but man I don't like to do that I don't know I don't know what else to do I um, place a Mauser order for one capacitor for this thing here's what I'm gonna do with this I'm making these two little eyelet hook things out of this wire what I've done is I've soldered them and I bent them over and run them along the trace both there and there to give it some extra support now what I've got is I've got two little eyelets on the top and I'm going to start with the disc capacitor and I'll feed it through and solder it in there and if it doesn't work I'll be able to remove it without removing the board and uh, put a different cap in it. And there's what the capacitor looks like soldered into the eyelets. So this way if, if this doesn't work out when I put it back together I can just unsolder it and then I guess I'll have to order the proper 0.0015 mylar cap at a thousand volts because I looked all over this place I looked through a bunch of old scrap sets I looked everywhere for a cap of that value and it's just a rare value not at 630 volts but at a thousand volts it's a rare value okay it's all recapped um,
about the tube sockets we've already spot checked the resistors in part two about the the tube sockets uh, I'm reluctant to pull these tubes out of here I'm reluctant to screw with this the the tubes are stuck in there and I'm afraid I might break the pins and the sockets if I try and take them out so I'm just tempted just to leave it and we'll kind of tack it back together there's some wax caps on the back here that I need to change we'll tack it back together we'll test the electrolytics and we'll see how it performs the odds are the board is going to have to come out again anyway a friend of mine who local guy who's restored a bunch of these lately says that this couplet usually will start to display thermal trouble after you run the set a while so um, this set doesn't seem to have a whole lot of hours on it I say that and then I look at the light bulb here and the light bulb is just completely boiled off so yeah I think what we'll do is we'll put it back We'll check it out and then we'll go from there this is going to be a tedious process that's for sure thing is is you have to solder all these ground tabs back too because they ground different parts of the board and unless all of them are soldered then you're not going to have certain circuits grounded appropriately so uh, yeah big pain in the ass Okay, we got a 0 .001, 0 .001 here. Uh, it's in this stupid local distance switch circuit again. Um, not even going to worry about it. I got a 0 .047 here. 0047, sorry. 0047 at 10%. This is another hypercritical one in the vertical circuit. This one has got to be replaced. Yeah, this is the this is the boost filter right here. And that is a hot mess right there. That that is that O33. That is a hot melty mess and we're going to cut that out and replace it. There's another 0033 up under there that's got to be changed too. That This one's in par parallel across the vertical output. There's some flexibility on some of these um, where you can kind of get by without changing them but uh, that one definitely had to go and that one definitely had to go. So we'll see how it works now and depending on that if it works good I'll uh, pull the chassis back out and I'll just replace all of these let's test the two I pulled out real quick okay here's the uh, 0047 that was in the vertical circuit garbage let's test the leakage 150 volts garbage okay here's this wax melted thing Hey, not bad. Doing a lot better than those uh, state-of-the-art bumblebee things. Let's see. Let's test it on 150 volt leakage. Hey, right, look at that. The wax, the 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 melted wax ones are not near as bad as those. All right, this is back in here. It's just barely kind of everything's kind of barely tacked in, and uh, I'll throw the chassis back in and we'll fire it up and see how it performs and go from there all right I think I got everything hooked back up I got the CRT plugged in I got the high voltage lead plugged back in I got this which turns out to be the video lead I'm just going to leave these right here for now. Tuners connected. Uh, 
I'm leaving this off until it let it warm up because I don't want to overcurrent it. I'll touch that on there. And we'll see if we get a picture. Uh, time to power it up. I don't know if I got the speaker connected to the right two pins. I have to go back over my video. I surely don't hear anything at all. Alright, I went through the camera. I had the speaker hooked up to the wrong two pins, so let's try this again. It was making some kind of strange gurgling noise. Oh, that sounds better. I don't want to let that go too long. I don't see anything there. That's not a good sign. Definitely drawing good current through there. But no picture. Alright, I got the cathode current meter on it. No, the oscillator's not running. Well, that looks different. All right, well, here's where we're at right now. Let me screw with this. I, I gotta. Since I changed that capacitor on the horizontal coil, I got probably gonna have to get the stick and tweak it. That is very bizarre. The way I'm going to adjust this is I put the horizontal hold in the middle and I'm going to... Okay, now I'm going to try and deal with the vertical 
issue here. And the way you do this is you adjust the the the, the rear pot here. It's a bit of an improvement. I can them for one first class ticket to Fiji. <laughs> sure, I'll hold. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a crime scene, so you're just going to have to be patient. We'll need statements from each of you before you can leave. Anyway, I guess what I'm saying is that there's a lesson to be learned here. Life is precious, and no one really knows how long we've got. I wonder if there's a focus control on this, because it is soft. Well, if you're not going to cut the cake, can I have some now? Aren't you full? No. <laughs> Take a look at his pants. I adjusted that that coil and it cleared the audio up. Nuclear bomb in the hands of terrorists. We need someone who can shadow them without being detected. I'll do that. The middle of May. Pretty, pretty awesome. Pretty awesome, Jonathan. <laughs> well, I'm making off with 7,000 HD shows. We are dry at the moment, though, so no shower activity today. In fact. This is a time lapse from Angeles National Forest. Some good stuff right there. Nice the pressure. This trough is really digging in, increasing that onshore flow. That's where we're getting that cooler air moving in for the next couple of days. This area of low pressure is going to dive south and bring plenty of chances of rain, a lot of moisture, plenty of energy. And the rain chances look like this. I'm going to show you right now some of the timing on the future rainfall forecast. Start you off tonight, bring it through Wednesday. Not looking for really anything in this. A little bit of upside down and past the world's tallest skyscraper in a death-defying dance. Rossi, a professional pilot who developed this fantastical suit himself, has flown solo many times, but never before like this. It's human formation flight. Why, oh why, do they do it? Eve, take it away. We love to fly. We are exploring the limits. This is an interesting video on YouTube right now. It's actually in 4K. I put a new I put a new horizontal output tube in it. Look at that, full screen. I would never show it either, but I like to look at the video. Up next, the multi-billion dollar deal involving Verizon and an internet giant. Plus, cats on the beach, where these felines have moved to a local coastline, and why. And ahead at 7.30, the search for a missing Orange County couple intensifies, where police are focusing now. Local, our new carne asada entrees start with five grilled steak. So one thing about LA, we have all the uh, TV channels on over the air. As long as you have a good antenna here, you get everything. Giving up What's that? That's me TV. It's only like uh, 200. This is uh, Juice, the uh, non-stop Christian uh, music video station. I'm sure this TV never imagined it would show anything like this. Or I doubt that the people who designed and made the TV would ever have imagined this type of content being played on it. But you know, you never know.
gotta say this is this is just too great good to be true. <laughs> You know what? It's loud, but there's no bass. I would have expected more bass. Anyway, we'll make this uh, part two uh, of whatever. Um, the reason why the horizontal output was screwing up initially was because I don't have, you can see where the clip lead is there, I don't have that soldered, uh, that ground stake. It didn't, the solder didn't, uh, bite onto the tab so the ground is floating but yeah it's working and the vertical is rock solid with that disc capacitor in there I think we're just gonna leave that <laughs> 